and welcome to another video. I am Simply G and today I'm going to be showing off everything that I got for the month of September. Um, quite a bit to get through but you may have noticed that I am I, I'm in a little bit of a different spot um, because um, it's very exciting news. I have <laughs> recently purchased my own house. I've been in the process of moving and um, because of that uh, I'm still kind of settling in. I don't have everything where I would typically want it or need it. So bear with me. This is probably going to be the only time that this video is going to be filmed in this spot in particular. Um, and apologies for a sound and it's very windy here I don't know if you can hear that um, and I don't know where my microphone is either so <laughs> so we're, this is just all kind of mess today um, but there's lots to show off lots to talk about so I'll get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy start with the anime um, just a couple things to show off here first is the UK limited edition of Vinland Saga. This is the complete first season on Blu-ray. Obviously has the discs, a bunch of art cards and a booklet which has like bonus manga and things like that in it. Really 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 nice edition. It's very similar to the US one but um, I it doesn't have as many physical extras which for long time viewers you guys will know that I'm not necessarily a big fan of physical extras so it's totally fine by me that uh, <laughs> I don't have to deal with that. Vinland Saga is an adaptation of the manga of the same name by Makoto Yukimura um, which I love. It's a fantastic historical mm, drama action. Um, it's very, very good. I really enjoy um, Vinland Saga as well as Planetas, the creator's other work. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to the next season of this. It has been announced. Um, and so hopefully we'll see that sooner rather than later. Um, but I'll just open it. It's very tightly packed in there. We have our case front back three discs including special features and we have our various postcard art cards I'm not gonna get them all out but they are typically what you expect and of course as I said a booklet which includes character profiles and art and interviews and all the things that are typical for this kind of limited edition so yeah, really nicely put together release from MVM in the UK. They're one of the few, um, well, I've said this before, I tend to prefer British um, collectors or limited edition releases, um, especially those that have kind of a, are duplicating the US release because they tend to have less of the physical extras that I don't care about. In this case I believe the US edition had like a fabric poster hanging wall thing um, which I like legitimately hate those so it was nice to be able to get a, a nice edition of this show without all of that gaff. So yeah great show and um, definitely give it a watch. It's on streaming on High Dive um, it was also on Amazon Prime. I don't know if it's still there, but that's where I watched it many, many, many months ago. Anime I got for this month, other also UK releases. Um, and this is kind of um, complementing or replacing, upgrading, quote unquote, maybe the edition that I had of this before. So this is the UK season one and two release of Emma from Anime Limited. They are, these two box sets are done in the same style as the Nozomi um, DVD boxes. So it has your discs and then a booklet in a hard chipboard box. Really, really lovely. Um, includes the new dub. 
which was kickstarted. So prior to this, I've <laughs> I've owned Emma in a couple different ways. I used to own the the US DVD boxes that again were in this style um, and then when the Kickstarter or the crowdfunding campaign to put the show onto Blu-ray and to dub it was happening I I supported that so I had the US Blu-ray release for many years um, but here, I've said this before, like Region A, I can watch Region A releases without any real issue. It was a nice re release. Um, it was fun to kind of support a series through the crowdfunder like that. Um, but ultimately, Region B releases, <laughs> aka UK and Australian releases, are a little bit easier for me to play and to like kind of switch players and all sorts of things that I have to make sure I have a regionless um, Blu-ray and DVD player on hand at all times. Uh, plus, I do really like this style of box set. I, I find it nicer than the one that was made available through the Kickstarter, which was also nice, but it didn't have a lot of um, artwork. It was, um, yeah, just a little bit different. Anyway, Emma is a fantastic series. Another manga adaptation, this one from the manga of the same slash similar name um, by Kaoru Mori. I have the complete manga in English as well. Uh, we know, or long-time viewers know, that I'm a big fan of Kaoru Mori, so all of her works I do own in some capacity. And um, yeah, this is the story of a a maid during Victorian England who and, and her kind of forbidden romance with the a young you know the the first son of a kind of well-to-do family and so all of the ups and downs of a romance that doesn't that obviously has a lot of pressure it doesn't conform to societal standards and therefore you know there's not a whole lot of people who approve their relationship. Um, it's very, very good and I do recommend it, especially if you like Kaoru Mori's works. The ending of the series or the ending of season two um, kind of goes its own way. It has sort of a, um, yeah, original ending. It's, it's pretty in line with what the manga is or has. Um, but it isn't a hundred percent exact, so um, it's not inherently like you're gonna get the same story if you read the manga. Both are worth experiencing, in my opinion. It's really good, and uh, check it out if you haven't. Speaking of Kaoru and before I launch entirely into the manga, I also ended up getting all three wide barn editions of her art book scribbles so i previously owned one and two in the kind of standard size which is a lot smaller these aren't hardcover they are still paperback um, these are just a collection of her black and white illustrations which are fantastic the third is the newest one it was released this month and um, just continues to be a fantastic showcase of her artwork of all sorts right like Mori is a fantastic artist and if you haven't seen or read any of her art or her works before definitely check them out especially if you're like an artist yourself I think there's a fantastic amount you can learn from just how she composes her, her characters and and scenes and it's just she's oh she's very very talented and well worth experiencing her art for yourself and these larger editions do um let let her artwork shine a little bit more than the smaller ones so definitely give it a look if that's something that interests you on to manga. Um, I will say in this beginning part that I haven't read a lot, again, because I have been moving <laughs> and I haven't had a huge amount of time to sit down and read. Um, no leisure for me. But 
um, there's a lot of exciting debuts and one shots for this month and also a, a very exciting conclusion so um, yeah first and foremost I finally got <laughs> I finally got my my order from Glacier Bay Books. So I finally received all of the books that I pre-ordered with them. First being The Mermaid and the Prince by Tara Yumi. This is a full color comic about a mermaid and a prince. Um, and then it has like art at the back. Really lovely little book. Um, not super expensive and if you're wanting just kind of a short, sweet fairy tale. Check it out. So we have Invisible Parade by Mississippi. This is a short story collection. Um, I've read some of Mississippi's works prior, thanks to Glacier Bay. They continue to do great work. And this particular release um, came with a postcard which is always nice, always fun having little extras like that. I really appreciate the amount of time and effort and passion and just overwhelming effort and care that goes into the Glacier Bay releases. It really is, is a worthwhile read for all of their books and I've never been disappointed. And I assume that this will kind of be in line with that. I'm really looking forward to finally being able to sit down and read this, hopefully sooner rather than later. The very exciting uh, release of F by Imai Arata. This is a manga that came in the aftermath of the 2011 tsunami and the devastation um, to Japan that it caused. Um, it's something I'm really looking forward to. I, from everything that I've read about this and heard about this, it really has a critical look at kind of the, how Japan and the Japanese government, um, kind of treated this, the tragedy and the efforts after the fact and kind of the propaganda surrounding, surrounding the whole issue is, ooh, <laughs> I'm really, really excited to sit down and read this one because I always like when a series kind of, you know, has that critical look at at society and in disaster as well. And we, of course, have a fantastic essay included as well. Oh, I'm super excited for this one. And I know people have probably had a couple of these books for a little while, but because I pre-ordered all at once, I had to wait until all of them were released. So, um, yeah, this one is as well as all of these books, because there's a lot of exciting books for this month, are going on the top of the read pile. So hopefully I can wax poetic about how much I love them sooner rather than later. Final one shot that I got for this month is not a Glacier Bay book, but it is one that I've been very excited for. I have read this one. I read it when it first came out. Um, and it's, it's the title that I think changed a lot of people's perception on this creator and one that just solidified them as like a must read creator for me. And that is Look Back by Tatsuki Fujimoto. This is the story of two girls and uh, their relationship, not only with each other, but also with art and creation. It's also, I, I'm making assumptions here, but Fujimoto has a lot to say about the creative process and success and being an artist. And I think this really encapsulates um, their experience. Um, there's some very not subtle <laughs> um, allusions to to previous works of Fujimoto, so it's hard to not draw comparisons between the characters in this and um, Fujimoto's past works and, and Fujimoto themselves, but man, oh man, I adore this series. Even if you're not a fan of Fire Punch or Chainsaw Man 
or even Goodbye Eri, which is um, no, the most recent one shot, um, give this one a try. You can read it in its entirety on the Shonen Jump app, which is where I read it, and I'm sure most people read it. It came in the kind of the wake of the ending of Chainsaw Man. People were kind of wondering what was going to come from this creator uh, after after that series went on break or kind of concluded its first part. And this was just a phenomenal return to form. I love this. I love this comic so much. And if you are a creator or an artist of any sort, I think there's some resonance to the process and to the hard work and the kind of consistent, um, like trying to fight for recognition in, and, and then also fighting with what you yourself want, um, and how, you know, creating something that you love and that you want for yourself isn't inherently, um, what's going to be the things that attach themselves and how difficult the artistic process or the creative process, I should say, is and how much you can struggle internally. Um, it's fantastic. And then, of course, it has uh, just some of Fujimoto's kind of brand of weird and kooky and, um, you know, this none of, none of Fujimoto's works are grounded in realism and this one despite the premise and despite the setting is also that there's kind of a there's an interesting touch of low fantasy um that is paired with a really interesting expression of grief and I oh I love this I love this book so much um, yeah, check it out if you haven't. It is probably one of the best comics from one of the best comic creators coming out right now. And if you haven't read it yet, you are missing out. So we have the kind of debuts for ongoing series for this month. And I'm not going to flick through this one because this it's not actually that bad, but it's a little bit spicy, so we're gonna play it safe. Um, but this is one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. It's a new imprint from Seven Seas, and although, like, of the titles that they've announced, not a lot of them have really interested me, this one from the first song, okay, I'm gonna read that one. Um, and it was good. It was a solid little start to the series, and that is Ladies on Top, Volume 1, by... Uh, Neji Gan Ganameta. This is <laughs> a manga about a couple who kind of have, um, well, the sort of dominant and submissive of the relationship is flipped um, on the heteronormative expectation. Um, so it's a it's a femdom manga pretty much. Um, and it's great. It's really good. I think this book, as I might have just said, is a very found, like, I see it as more of a foundation to build from. Um, both of these characters already, like, kind of know what they want, although they've been denying their preferences for a long time. Um, so now that they've, they've kind of made it clear that, hey, this is something that like we're both interested in and rather than trying to stick to the status quo we should explore that and not feel weird about it now that that's all out of the way hopefully um we'll get some more interesting and fun <laughs> um dynamics between these characters so i mean obviously the premise is that this girl um, prefers to be the dominant one in a relationship. She's always struggled with her previous boyfriends like taking care of her and treating her like super gently and blah blah blah. Um, and 
as soon as like all of her boyfriends who are like really decent guys have done that she immediately switches off and isn't interested anymore but her current boyfriend who's like the super hot guy um and nice and whatever again like really good guy mr perfect blah 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 um he starts doing that same thing to her but um at the same time she can see that he's kind of struggling with being the dominant one in the relationship and um that actually results in a lot of self-consciousness around sexual performance and things like that oh my god it is so windy um which ultimately like results in them having a lot of kerfuffles <laughs> with in intimacy and obviously on the other hand um this guy who is our main male character he is a bit more submissive he prefers someone else to take the lead um in a relationship but because of toxic masculinity he he thinks that you know that's wrong and that he needs to be more proactive and you know be the man of the relationship even when he doesn't isn't naturally inclined to that and so is he's very self-conscious about that he's had some really like I just really bad past relationships that are pretty legitimately traumatic um that he's still working through and um so hopefully together the two of the these um crazy kids will work something out it was good as I said um it's like this is seven so this is from steamship this is seven seasons like ladies focused you know mature manga um smutty stuff as i said there's not a huge amount well there's really nothing else and currently announced for this um imprint that i'm particularly interested in um and this one is pretty tame so far like there's but again i i expect it to ramp up in the coming volumes uh the worst you're gonna get in this in this particular volume is like a bunch of bra shots <laughs> which is on the cover anyway so like you know what you're expecting um yeah that's it's it's a decent start to something that i hope will be just like pretty fun and a good exploration of you know just personal preference and bucking the like expected societal dynamic of relationships um and I'm, I'm not expecting it to go into like a deep criticism of toxic heteronormative heteronormativity um i'm just expecting it to hopefully <laughs> be you know a, a nice couple who has their her preferences and enough communication and self-assuredness to ask for what they want um I, i'd appreciate that <laughs> we have a concluding volume another really exciting release from a publisher that um well i buy all of their manga releases <laughs> at least and this is the po clan volume two by moto hagio uh it's been a long wait but man oh man it's so nice to have the rest of the series finally in english and finally complete the series um fantastic fantastic manga about vampanella uh from beloved and incredibly famous and influential creator moto Hagio from the year 24 group um Hagio is another one of those creators where i just absolutely love everything that she's put out that has been made available in English at least uh, she's um, yeah been hugely influential through various um, various titles that she's put out this one being one of them um, this follows the story of two Vampanella siblings and um, as well as as our main character his boyfriend who is also now a Vampanella um, the tragedy, the drama, but also just kind of the the sweet 
effervescence of of being uh, immortal beings and kind of just their their various adventures throughout the ages as you know unaging undying teens uh it's a great series and if you haven't tried it yet give it a shot um fantagraphics have, have put out this book in such a beautiful edition and Oh, it's always so nice having more Hagio in your life, um, especially such a seminal work like this. Um, there's a reason she's so well regarded. She's a reason, kind of one of the juggernauts of the 70s. And everything about this series and Hagio's work in general is just so, so beautiful. I just absolutely encourage you to to check it out because it is oh it's so good and if you love classic 70s shoujo then um you need to get this like it's not even a question what are you doing if you haven't gotten this yet um yeah check it out <laughs> we have the ongoing titles this one's kind of i put it with the ongoing stuff but it is sort of a standalone but one that I'm so excited for and the most exciting part of my Glacier Bay order and that is Gleolia uh, Volume 3. This one also came with a postcard although, or a print I should say. I don't know where it is right now but this is a collection of one shots from various artists and all oh, these anthologies are continue to be fabulous. I haven't again I haven't had the chance to read it. Can you hear the pain in my voice? I just am so, so excited to actually be able to sit down and read this at some point once I'm not trying to survive out of moving boxes. It's, oh, I can't tell you how exciting it is that these anthologies continue to be made and put together and the quality of them just even because I flipped through a little bit with this one, just continues to be so high. Just such an uh, interesting collection of creators and stories and ideas that um, if you do enjoy any sort of you know, non-mainstream comic, indie comics, alternative comics, you should be reading Glacier Bay's books anyway. But even if you pick up nothing else, the, the anthologies are phenomenal um there's no real other way to put it it just continues to be fantastic and i cannot wait i i hope and pray for a volume four but i know that it's such a um time consuming effort um that the the glacier raid team put into this these releases and the passion and the love that they have for comics is just so, so obvious. And yeah, I just, I, I yearn for more. Um, although if this is the last one as well, like, I'm not going to say it's fine, but it's a, it's a fantastic way to end it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, it just continues to be so good it continues to be so good and um yeah i just it's so worth the wait for ongoing manga we have the ever wonderful hilarious and exciting delicious and dungeon by ryo kokui this is a comedy fantasy manga about a group of adventurers who are in a dungeon and are well, just kind of adventuring, but also making food of all the weird and wonderful creatures. Although food isn't a huge um, focus in this particular volume, we are getting a little more into, uh, forgive the pun, the meat and potatoes of the plot line. Um, the series is kind of wrapping up. I can feel it's in its end stages, so they're actually progressing the plot more than than just having the luxury to sit and wait and have delicious meals sort of creatures that don't exist. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's a fantastic series, hilariously funny. I adore Ryo Kokui's character writing, character creation, a world building. There's just so, so much to enjoy about this series. And if you haven't tried it, you definitely should. It is well worth reading, especially if you like fantasy and sort of low fantasy stuff. Yes, it's a dungeon crawler, but not nearly in the same way that a lot of current dungeon crawler fantasies are. So give it a shot if you haven't. Next is Blue Period Volume 9 by Subasa Yamaguchi. This is one that I'm ashamed to say I'm still behind on. Um, so I'm hoping to read the couple volumes that I need to to catch up. This is the story of a, a boy who, who at, at art university and kind of again uh, this look at the creative process and artists and artistic ability and development and passion um, and then of course the ever constant like difference between creative um, or creating something that you enjoy versus creating something that will be commercially you know popular interested successful um, it's very very good a really great look at all sorts of art and artists and I look forward to continuing this when I when I have a chance so this one I have read. I read it immediately when I picked it up after my comic, my comic store got it in. This is Lost Lad London Volume 2 by Shima Shinya. I've talked about how this series was made exactly for me. It's a murder mystery of, and the kind of ragtag team of an old grizzled detective and partnering with the university student who is kind of being being framed for this murder um after he discovers the murder weapon in his pocket it's a fantastic like it's fantastically fun um on one hand i i said before like i'm a huge sucker for this type of story i grew up with a lot of british murder mystery and that is exactly what this is uh it also has a really wonderful scrutinization of the police for like this is not copaganda um which is always really refreshing yes one of our characters is a detective um, but a huge part of the story arc is about racial profiling and the racial injustice inside and outside of the police force, um, societal racism, but even more than that, the, the gender and, and racial bias within the police force. Our main detective character is black. Um, one of his only friends within the department is a Japanese woman. Um, who has had to, both of them have had to really work very very hard to get to the position that they're in and ultimately are the only ones that truly kind of get each other within this uh, culture that is such a chauvinistic racist um, yeah just bigoted bigoted, inherently bigoted, um, workplace. Um, it's fantastic. And I really, really, really look forward to seeing how it wraps up because the third volume is the final volume. I, like, I don't think the mystery itself is that, um, impossible to figure out, but the the series itself just does everything right and i just adore also i adore the art style like I, j I just oh my gosh give me more of of this creator's comics because i adore it, it i also said with the first volume it's pretty obvious that um well it feels obvious that shimashinya has spent time overseas like outside of japan probably i, I want to say probably in England, um, this captures British society and London in particular very, very well. And again, this kind of segregation between 
various racial groups and the inherent racism and social uh, disparity and classism that's just rife. Um, yeah, very, very good. Read it. To the BL. Um, most of this I haven't read because I only got it a couple days ago. And again, I've just been really busy. One, the first one is a one shot uh, from a creator that I've enjoyed a lot of their work. Um, it's always very interesting. <laughs> Keep pushing a certain agenda. And that is Monotone Blue by Nagabe. This is a BL between a, a cat boy and a lizard boy. Um, Nagabe continuing to push their furry agenda, which I'm totally fine with. <laughs> haven't, as I said, haven't read this one in particular because I just haven't had the time. But I, I find Nagabe's stories pretty captivating, pretty um, interesting, and I look forward to checking this one out. Um, because I just, oh, it's just interesting, right? And I think that the way that Nagabe kind of portrays these anthropomorphic animal, animals within like a human society, quote unquote, um, is pretty interesting. Um, and I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, look for, I look forward to reading it and I'm glad that we're getting more Nagabe in English. One I haven't even taken the plastic wrapping off of. It's that recently I got it. And that is Seaside Stranger Volume 4. This is the continuation of Kikana's, uh, yeah, romance BL series between two guys who initially were living on an island, but now in this current story arc are, have been living in uh, one of their family homes. And so the drama that comes with kind of coordinating with family that doesn't really inherently accept you um and the prickly situation that that can be in um it's really good and I'm glad that we keep keep getting more of the series because it's one of my favorite BL coming out right now and it's just really pretty pretty to look at it's a really well balanced well written relationship as well oh my gosh I wasn't throwing it around the place um there's a lot of really interesting conversations and topics broached in the series that um, kind of deal with with being gay and, and queer within Japan. And again, that, that kind of tightrope walk of dealing with family and society. Um, so yeah, very, very good. So we have volume two of Fangs by Billy Bali Bali. This is a release by Tokyo Pop BL story about two vampires. Um, one of them who's like a vampire. I don't want to say detective, but he's like, or maybe social worker is better. He goes around and checks in on all the vampires in the area. Again, haven't read this one, but after, um, I read the first one. Um, but our, one of our characters, after being unceremoniously turned into a vampire, uh, he is kind of brought under this, this other guy's wing, this social worker, I guess. I don't, that's not the right term, but, um, he's kind of being looked after by him. And then ultimately, like, their relationship gets more serious and it, it turns pretty spicy pretty quickly. Um, it's really good if you like vampires. Um, and steamy romance, and then this one is for you. It also has a really interesting kind of philosophical look at, and which is pretty typical out of like vampires and the unending, you know, undead, um, being an immortal creature. Uh, but also this idea of, cause in this interpretation, vampires always have like a partner, um, you know, soulmate quote unquote to spend eternity with and kind of what happens when that person disappears from your life as as a creature that lives forever uh yeah there's a lot of hints for the character's past um 
and how that's affecting his his current day self but yeah really good and I look forward to to actually sitting down and reading this one finally for BL this is a Korean webcomic um, and another one that I'm gonna be careful to flip through because it's it's not only very spicy but uncensored um, full color comic on or off by a1 another release by Tokyo pop their first or one of their first um, <laughs> web comics that I'm being very careful because there is a lot of um, yeah, not not safe for YouTube content in this book. Uh, so anyway, this is the story. I have read this one. Uh, this is the story of pretty, like, these two guys. Um, one who's the director of a big company, the other who's kind of in charge. Well, he's the handler <laughs> of a software development team. And he was invited to by his friend, who is actually kind of. She's the founder, but she hasn't been able to work with them because of her own um, family background. Anyway, um, these two kind of have like a pretty messy one night stand uh, that is leads to all sorts of um, miscommunications, misinterpretations, but ultimately, um, you know, this software development team, they win a job for this big company that they were really needing and hoping for. Um, and the first impressions that both of these characters have of each other, they soon pretty quickly realize is wrong and that they're, the whole situation up to this point has been really me messy and, um, you know, not that what they first initially thought. It's, uh, I'm not going to say this is for everyone. The dynamic between the two characters, especially early on, is pretty iffy. Um, I'm not going to say it's like dubious in consent or anything like that. It's not, um, but it is kind of dubious in how things uh, initially kind of go. One of the big points of this is that you know, um, our director, our very important director of this company, he hates um, bribery or anything like that. So when he misinterprets um, this other guy, at, like offering to sleep with him as that sort of level of bribery, then, um, or someone who would stoop to that, and says it's, it's, mm. It's messy, <laughs> um, but it's it's good, and I'm looking forward. Like I do, actually want to read more. This is one that is like ended kind of unceremoniously, or is at least on hiatus. I know A One had to f finish it or end it very quickly on the platform that it was on, and I don't know whether that was due to health related issues or monetary related issues, things like that. I don't know. Um, but all in all, uh, it does mean that the third volume will be probably the last for the foreseeable future, but who knows, right? There's been rumors that there's a continuation or statements by A1 that they will continue in some capacity. I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, but yeah, on or off. It's, if you like webtoons especially, this is a pretty nice release from Tokyo Pop. I hate to give them credit, but... They, their actual book quality is very good. The color pages are very nice. It's got significant weight to it. Um, and if you're if you're a fan of the series, then this is a, a pretty good release and it's completely uncensored, as mentioned. That's everything. A lot of stuff for a big month. Um, yeah. <laughs> a hectic month because obviously I, I'm not in my usual spot. And won't be, won't be from now on. Um, but hopefully by next end of next month, the collection room will have be in more of a state of finish than it is right now, <laughs> which is a, just a state of chaos. Um, so yeah, apologies for for 
the the big switch up and I don't necessarily know how well filming has gone for this particular video um, but let me know your thoughts on any of these titles there are just so many wonderful exciting new things to talk about and um, yeah if you've tried them let me know your thoughts feelings have you heard of some of these or are they completely new to you all that good stuff um, yeah and until then catch me uh, oh, I, I will catch you guys in the next video <laughs> bye till then